Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Flow Over Fear podcast, where it is our mission to help you to rise above fear and realize your ultimate potential in leadership and life. I'm your host, Adam Hill, and it is my goal to share with you the human side of high performance. My guests share their experience with fear, anxiety, struggle, challenge, and most importantly, despite all of it, how they rose above it to achieve incredible results. So if you're ready to rise up, let's get started. Hey, everyone, and welcome to this recap episode of Flow Over Fear. And today I'm going to break down the interview that I just had with Hugh Edwards. Now, Hugh is a leadership coach. He is a, a, a transformational coach who comes with a corporate background, who has a high education. I mean, this guy went to Oxford. He got an MBA from Harvard, two mathematics degrees from Oxford University. I mean, geez, that's, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a high educated person there. And then he went on to work for at Goldman Sachs, Bridgewater Associates, which we talked into a lot, and ultimately ended up buying a, buying a business uh, himself and putting a personal guarantee on the line in order to do it. And uh, he's become a true success and a, and, a, and a true story of how we can live with some of our fears or some of our challenges. And we can stand at uh, the cusp of something new. And we could choose to either take the leap or fall off and collapse. And he himself took that leap. He took the leap of faith and took and and believed in himself enough to take that leap multiple times in his life. I mean, we talked about it not just in business, uh, but with his entrepreneurial spirit and with his fitness and his health and uh, his ventures out into the ultra marathon world, where we talked about we talked about how he got into Leadville and. The first time he tried it, it was within a couple of months of trying his first marathon. And where did he have that first marathon? He had that first marathon in Leadville. And if you don't know where Leadville is, it's about 10,000 feet in elevation in, in the middle of Colorado that is basically running over a mountain. Um, and he did that marathon, put himself in for a uh, uh, for a lottery slot to get into the Leadville 100 and ended up making it in and attempting to run it. And on that first attempt, he didn't quite make the cutoffs. He, he, he missed the cutoff at mile 87. Now picture that for a moment, dear listener. Picture yourself at mile 87. You're exhausted. Your feet are cramped. You're, you're, you, I mean, you've just run 87 miles over mountains. And now they come up to you and they tell you, I'm sorry, you didn't make the cutoff. We're going to have to ask you to exit the course. Um, it had to be heartbreaking at that point. But what did he do? A few years later, he came back and he conquered the race by coming in under the cutoff. And only that, he came back and did it again later. He, uh, he, so he, he, uh, he has two Leadville finishes uh, after that first DNF attempt and many other uh, ultra distance uh, running experiences as well. And one of the things that we talked about that is absolutely true within this is that you know, within the world of endurance racing, it's great for high performers because there's a lot of faith that goes into that process. Um, and that's true within the journey of entrepreneurs and business leaders as well, and leaders in general, is that when you think about leadership and you think about endurance racing, faith plays a very important role. And while we don't, while, while many of us may not want to admit that, we want to admit that it's just the training that gets us there. And yes, the physical training is important, but you're never going to train the distance of a hundred mile race in training. You're not going to run a hundred miles unless you're crazy, but you are going to race that distance and you have to have the faith that the training that you're doing, that everything that you're doing that's within your control will prepare you for the things that are outside of your control that get you to that hundred mile finish line. That was an important point that we talked about was that, that we have to have that faith in, in that. It, in the, and for leaders like us, you know, Hugh put it in a very simple, simple way that most leaders, when we get to, get to the level of CEO or executive or the president of the United States even, that everybody's winging it, that, those, that, that anybody in those kinds of leadership position, there's no manual for how to lead. There are 
tips and tactics, but there's no specific standard operating procedure for how to lead in those situations. Everybody is winging it. And it's, it's, it's our ability to wing it in that sense that defines our character and defines how we lead. And we can lead really well when we're leaning into our values and we're leaning into our core values. And that may not make everybody happy. It may actually piss a lot of people off. But when we're leaning into our values, our core values, that's where we're leading with purpose. That's where we're leading with our purpose. And that's where we're winging it with purpose, really. Right? And so that, that was not always the case for Hugh. When he was working at Bridgewater Associates, Bridgewater is known. I mean, Ray Dalio started this company and he wrote the book. He literally wrote the book on principles within business. And he wrote it to the extent that Bridgewater Associates, which is his company, is running based on those principles. And so it's a culture that's clearly defined, has clearly defined principles, clearly defined values. And Hugh was miserable there. He's not happy. He was not fulfilled. He felt like he was constantly being criticized, constantly not having the freedom to make the decisions he needed to make, and that he was he was he, that he was constantly getting this over feedback loop. And there's there's a possibility for over feedback, right? It wasn't fitting with his values. But one thing that that experience happened in it, and and it led him to this point that happened in his life, where he said that he would rather crash into a tree on the way to work. So that he could miss work for one day, spending it in the emergency room. That's how bad it was for him. That he would rather crash into a tree so that he would have to avoid going to work for one day. That's the power of not being aligned with the values. And the whole reason is that it had nothing to do with Bridgewater. Bridgewater was not the problem in that sense. Bridgewater had its principles clearly defined, has its values clearly defined. But one of the but but the thing was when it doesn't matter how clearly defined the values or the principles are or how wonderful the culture is of an organization the reality is if if you're in a situation where you're working in a company that is not aligned with your values with your core values you're going to be miserable no matter how wonderful that company is if it's not aligned with your core values, you're, you, would, you will rather spend the day in an emergency room than go into work that day. That is the reality. And Hugh not only saw that for himself, I've seen it multiple times within the organization that I run. I've seen it with myself in other organizations where my, where my values were not aligned and I felt like I was not being fulfilled and my friends, that is a powerful, powerful obstruction to our ultimate purpose. And thank God that Hugh discovered that in himself, that once he was able to let go and take the leap, and that's one of the gifts that Bridgewater actually gave him, was the ability to find his core values. He discovered that one of his core values was autonomy, was to be autonomous. His other core value was connection, was being able to connect with the end user. And those two core values led him to take that leap and go off into the unknown, which started off as, as 100 days of skiing, but then turned into purchasing a business, living out the core values that he has. And when he started living out those core values, a beautiful thing happened. A beautiful thing happened. He started to... He started to find flow when he was practicing his core values on a daily basis. That's when he experienced flow and it changed his relationship with fear because while fear was still present, it was not obstructive. And that's the beauty of flow over fear, right? Is when you experience that flow, fear is no longer an obstruction. Fear always exists with us and it's fine to experience fear. And Hugh even said it. When we're in flow, it's okay to experience fear because we're having a different experience with it. You talked about the, uh, an experience where he was buying this business. He had to put a personal guarantee on the loan that he was getting for $17 million. This, If he would have defaulted on this loan anyway, he would have had to have gone bankrupt. 
but it was okay with him because he was in flow. He was living with his values. He was living in his values and he was experiencing flow. When those two things are obstructed, the fear becomes overwhelming. And then that's, that's where we get into our anxieties, into our fears is when we're, we're not living out our core values. Core values are, are so tremendously important in this world. And Hugh, talk, Hugh, Hugh said something, another thing that he, he'd mentioned about um, success, about the success that he's had, is that everything that, that he's achieved, all those times where he found flow, is just, it's, it's the result of, of, of little accidents, of serendipity, the little accidents and ser- serendipity that led to his successes. And when we're in the flow and we're not obstructed by fear, we're able to see those a little bit more clearly. We're, we're able to experience those a little bit more clearly. It's powerful because it's, it's always little accidents. In his case, he went, he went with a group of, of runners to go run hill repeats to train for a marathon. And he found out that he would be running a marathon on that day. And that became his first marathon. You'll have to listen to that story. Um, but ultimately that those little accidents, when we have clarity of purpose and when we're aligned with our values and when we're in flow, we, those lead to those little accidents, those little serendipities lead to success. So be on the lookout for those little serendipities. And my, my friends, clarity, clarity comes from being at the edge of the next step. It's at the edge of the cliff where we're willing to take the leap into the tumultuous waters but ultimately live our best lives because if we don't, the rocks can tumble below us and we can, we can just fall in an uncontrolled fashion being swept up by the waves below. It's about having that faith, having that clarity and finding a community. And Hugh has offered that through his new program uh, and his new coaching that he is just launching now called the path to profitable purpose where you could find that purpose. Um, and, 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 uh, you can look Hugh up on LinkedIn. You could find him at Hugh Edwards. That's H U W Edwards. And there you can learn all about him. I really, really suggest you listen to this episode because he's got a lot of gold nuggets. And, you know, when we're, when we're talking about standing at the edge of the proverbial cliff, the, the, you know, where, where our next, our, our, greatest achievements in this life lie beyond, you know, taking that leap. Um, you know, we want to take control of that and we want to explore, uh, we want to explore what's next in, in a healthy and safe way, but we want to take that risk and we want to do it based on our values, on our core values and getting the clarity and getting into the flow. So please listen to the episode. It was great. And, um, and, I will definitely want to have Hugh back soon so that we can go to round two and talk a little bit more about uh, what achievements he has going on next. Thanks for joining on this recap episode. We'll see you next time. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the Flow Over Fear podcast. If you'd like to learn more about getting into flow and learn the foundations of flow, I have a free video series on my website at www.adamcliffordhill.com the foundations of flow. Feel free to go there and download it and start your journey to rising above fear and achieving greater flow in your life. And if you like this episode, and I'm guessing you did if you stuck around for this long, then please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and you will receive notifications when I have new interviews, new recaps, and new trainings that pop up on YouTube. Thanks again for joining us. 